Hello everybody and thanks for tuning in to another episode here in the series. My name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. Last few episodes we went ahead and implemented this little bottom sheet down here that we see pop up. We created global actions to it so we can access it in multiple locations inside the app. And in today's episode we're going to start our search implementation. So inside of our little nav drawer or drawer layout, I believe it's called here, I've added a new fragment, a new menu item to this layout called search characters. As we can see here, it is a very basic layout that at the moment does absolutely nothing, but I do want to talk about how we can create a customizable or a custom search interface that we will eventually hook up to an API, the Rick and Morty API specifically, to get some information on screen here. So behind me we have a couple green files here, but specifically the character search fragment, the character search view model, which is empty, and the character search, search paging source, which is also empty other than just a very basic implementation of the refresh key function, and then really nothing else here inside of the load. But point being, this endpoint here for search is page, so I've just gone, a, gone ahead and created some of the boilerplate stuff for us and got that out of the way. But if we take a look at our implementation here for the XML for the layout, it is pretty straightforward, but I do basically just want to cover uh, a little bit here so that you guys are caught up to speed. So inside the layout, there are really only two elements here, a material card view and an epoxy recycler view. So the recycler view is straightforward. It just contains all of these elements that we're eventually going to populate. But the card view has a little bit going on here where inside of it, it has the image view that is this little search icon up here and then an edit text view that we are eventually going to hook into to get the user's search, get the user's text query that we're going to pass on to the back end. So not too much going on, just a little bit of you know material goodness here to make this little UI that's up here. But point being, we do have a text field here that the user should be able to type something in. For instance, the name Morty, and then all of the elements would show up down here where they are just all of the different Mortys from uh, whatever we get back from the API. Taking a look at the API here, we do have a the ability to filter by name, which is what we're going to just implement very quickly. There are a few other things we can filter by status, species, blah, blah, blah. But you can see here that there is going to be a page response, and then there will be results here. So that is why we have all of our uh, paging three goodness up here, the paging source and whatnot up and running. But quite simply, there's really been no big progress here. We just have a fragment that is basically all hooked up with our view binding and we have a view model set up here that we are not doing anything with, it's just empty. So I did just want to talk about in this episode how to actually tie into this edit text view that we have here to basically offer a search functionality that you would expect. So specifically inside of our uh, fragment layer here, we can access our view binding and say search edit text. And I think there's an on, this is the function I was looking for, the do after text change. And this is basically going to uh, invoke this code or this block of code right here after the text has been changed. So it's pretty good. Uh, we're just going to call at the moment uh, print line and say it question mark string. And then otherwise we will just print out an empty string here. So if we just go ahead and run this here and get back to our screen, you can see here I've cleared out the logs here in our IDE. And then as we type in here and let's say uh, Morty again, we can see a whole bunch of logs that come through, the M, M, O, M, O, R, M, O, and then we eventually spell out Morty right here. And so that is because inside of this edit text that we've gone ahead and referenced here, we have this function do after text changed. Again, pretty straightforward as to what it does. But as we can see here, we do get a direct access into what the user has put so far. It even passes us basically what exists inside of the edit text at the moment. And then if we were to just back up and delete everything here, we can see basically, you know, the teardown process of that, where we started hitting delete here, and then we eventually got to nothing. So we can use this to our advantage to create a very simple searchable interface and a very simple way to get the user's input. However, we are talking about creating network calls. So we don't want that basically as they're typing this out here, so if they type out Rick instead, 
this code, this block of code has been executed four times, one for each letter in the name that we've gone ahead and defined here. While this might be a good demonstration for this example, it's not really practical in the sense that you know, we don't want to be making an API call every single time that there is a change to this edit text field. So what we can do is we can actually slightly enhance this implementation to allow for a bit more of an intelligent search process. So I'm going to go ahead and define a few variables up here. We're going to say current text. We'll just initialize that to nothing. We're going to create a handler equals the android.os handler and inside we are going to call inside the constructor, we will call looper.gain get main looper. And then we are also going to create a, uh, let's call it search runnable, is a runnable here. So we can just very easily initialize it there. And then we're basically just going to hoist this into our, uh, the, the print line into the runnable here. And then we're going to make use of this handler runnable uh, combination to accomplish exactly what we've done here. So instead we can actually inside a handler call handler.post and there is post and then post delayed and a oh, whole other or a couple other uh, options here but post and post delayed are the most popular. So if we go ahead and say post our search runnable, basically this will go ahead and add this runnable to a queue here that exists inside of this handler. And then, you know, since there is no delay here, it will basically execute immediately. So just to rerun some things here and make sure that everything is up and running as it was before, you can see here I've gone ahead and cleared the uh, logs here. And then as we type the word, as we type the word hello, nothing happens because we don't actually change the value of our current text here. So we're going to say current text equals the it dot to string. Otherwise we will just set it to an empty string if it is null here. So my apologies there, but the concept here is that after our text is changed, we're going to go ahead and modify a class level variable. And then we're going to post basically a job to some kind of a queue, some kind of a bus, some kind of a messaging system that is going to run this particular runnable, the search runnable, which will just print the current text to the screen here to the logs. So if we go ahead and just clear this stuff out again and I hit the backspace, we will see that the word hello is just being erased as we type it in front of us. And then if we go ahead and type Rick, we see that entire thing happen. So again, we have this one-to-one -one relationship of the text being input to the field and the text being output here. So that's all good and well, but we are just one simple step away from basically implementing a search functionality, or at least the engine beneath the search functionality. So if you can imagine other search functionalities, sometimes it does happen basically immediately as you are typing, but other times it allows you to basically type or, or input something into the field, and then afterwards it searches based on what you've put in. And this is a pretty common pattern because you don't want to be searching every little character that the user inputs, but you want to search once they create some kind of a pause in their text input or whatever the case is. So we don't have to, we don't have to change anything inside of our search runnable, but what we can do is we can make this handler a little bit more intelligent. So if the first thing we do is say remove callbacks on the search runnable, this will basically remove any of the search runnables or the search runnable that exists inside of this handler that is at this point going to post something to a delayed time. So we can post a particular runnable here, the search runnable to run and let's put it 500 milliseconds after. So they input an R here in this text field because they're going to type out the word Rick we remove any callbacks to make sure that the handler basically has nothing that it's supposed to do. And then we post a delayed callback here, the search runnable to run 500 milliseconds or half a second after this function has ran. So if they just type the word or the letter R and nothing else, after half a second, it will go ahead and you know run this block of code, run this runnable here, which at this point is just going to print something out, but we will eventually hook that up to the API so that we do make a network call after the fact. So again, we're just gonna get everything up and running here. We are just going to delete some logs. And now once we start typing, if we say Rick and Morty, we see that the logs here only output one statement, if you will, uh, that has all of the contents here, the Rick and Morty, right? And it doesn't have the R and then the RI and then the RIC and the RIK, et cetera, all the way to the end of this, 
because every single time we make a change to this text field, this block of code runs. Again, we remove the callback and then we post something to happen at least 500 milliseconds after this line of code here executes. And so this is super powerful because instead of running some code every single time the user taps back or they, they make an edit to the uh, text field, we now only care about when they've stopped typing or when they've gotten to some point where it's of value to the user, right? So if they just start typing more and then they stop typing because they want to delay and they want to see some search results, it's a good idea that at that point we get to print this out, we get to basically capture that little pause in the user's interaction, and then we can go ahead and do something with it. So this is basically it for the episode here. We're not going to dive into the networking. We will get into that in the next one. But I did just want to bring this little paradigm here where we basically remove things and repost them to handlers to accomplish this you know, delayed response or something along those lines. So no matter how long they end up typing here, if we just quickly open this up again and say, you know, no matter how long, you can see here that I struggled to type that out. But the point being is that we did not get any other logs here to uh, the console other than when I stopped typing at the very end of that little rant that I went on there <laughs> on the keyboard. So point being, we now have a pretty feasible way to not only capture what the user is inputting into the uh, text field, but also we're going to pause and basically run this code at some later point when they do have some kind of, you know, they, they've completed some action or they've gone ahead and paused long enough for us to basically deem that a reasonable time to hit an API call. So eventually we are just going to do some networking at this point. We are not going to just be printing out things to the console. Instead, we are going to make our API call and then we will display the results beneath them. And so once this all comes together, it will feel like a very cohesive search experience that functions properly in the way that it should. So. If you're excited for that, please give a thumbs up. If you've made it this far, I'd really appreciate it. And if you notice you are not subscribed at this point, it would be great to subscribe just so you don't miss out on the rest of this implementation and then anything else that comes out after the fact. So thanks for watching this one, guys. I will catch you in the next one where we're going to go ahead and actually implement our little logic here to make the network calls and search the API here uh, for the different characters that are put in. So I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.